Good morning, and God bless you. Today is Thursday of the 28th week of Ordinary Time. And today we celebrate a wonderful saint, Saint Teresa of Avila, otherwise known as Saint Teresa of Jesus. And this was the religious name that she took. She was a Carmelite sister who lived in the 16th century. And together with Saint John the Cross, they both together reformed the Carmelite community that was in great need of reforming. And in order to understand the gift of her life and the way that she reformed this religious order, I want to read from the first reading today, which is St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And here's what it says. Blessed be God the F and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accordance with the favor of his will. In Christ we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accordance with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. In all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accordance with his favor that he has set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Notice in this beautiful uh, passage from this letter, the centrality of Christ. And the line that struck me the most was at the very end, to sum up all things in Christ. When you and I woke up this morning at some point, we needed to look into the mirror in order to make sure that we would be presentable to the world before heading out into it. But this morning we needed to do something far more important, and that was to look at Christ in order to know how to be in the world and to know our place in it. That mirror that we look into can never tell us who we are. There's that line, that, that very oft-repeated line from the Second Vatican Council Man is fully revealed in Christ. It is only when we look at Christ that we can know ourselves, that we can see others correctly, and that we can know the purpose and meaning of our lives. This is what it means when it says that Jesus is the light of the world. Outside of Jesus, we truly walk in darkness. We cannot see correctly. We would be, in the scriptural sense, blind. So the way that St. Teresa of Avila reformed the Carmelite order, because at that time, the rule of life by which they lived lost its point of reference. And what is the point of reference for any religious order in terms of the way they live? Of course, it has to be Christ. And the way that she reformed the order then was to turn the gaze of every sister 
in that religious community to turn their gaze to Christ. And this is why she spent many of the years in religious life teaching the sisters how to pray. And especially that kind of prayer that we call meditation or contemplation, sometimes referred to as mental prayer. But basically, meditating on the life of Christ in such a way that in meditating, you actually become like the one upon whom you gaze. And in order to do this, she and St. John the Cross, her companion, had to suffer much. They had to bear with criticism, and sometimes, in some cases, persecution and outright rejection. But they bore this suffering in union with Christ. And we could say that because they became like Christ, they became the sources of renewal, not only at that time, but this renewal extended into further generations. So what does this mean for you and I? As we look at the world today, the world is in need of so much renewal. As we look at the church, the church too is in need of its own renewal. But you and I both know, and we could take the example and life of St. Teresa of Jesus, that the world and the church will only be renewed if everyone turns to Christ. When the disciples followed Jesus, they were not following just one great teacher among many others. We can never put Jesus in the class of great teachers because Jesus is so much more than that. They were to follow Christ in such a way, to identify with Christ in such a way that Jesus would become the interpretive lens by which they would see themselves, that they would see others, that they would see their place in the world and their purpose. In fact, they were to identify with Christ so closely that they were to actually become other Christs. This is the way for us, the greatest gift that you and I can give to our families, the way you and I can be a blessing in the church and a gift to the world is by becoming more like Christ. Isn't it wonderful that we have the Eucharist at the center of our life in the church? And what is the understanding of that moment in the week? The church has always been clear. We are to become like the one we receive. We are to become other Christ's. And this is how we will be, therefore, an instrument of renewal, <clears throat> not only in the church, but also in the world. So let us take up, or let's say be faithful to the practice of meditating on the life of Christ, not approaching it in the way of just a uh, head knowledge, but in order to become like the one upon whom we gaze. This is the gift of the rosary, how Mary walks with us through the mysteries of Christ, that we might see everything through Christ and in Christ. So thank God uh, today uh, 
for the gift of Jesus, for all the ways that he comes to us, for all the, the, the ways that he transforms us. Let us be open to that transformation because this will not only renew us and hopefully those around us, but it will renew the church and please, dear God, it will renew the world, bringing everything to Christ. Amen. So God bless your day. I'll see you tomorrow.